Now, the, the benefit of these high intensity interval training is Hey guys, Mark McKillier with Live Anabolic and today, <laughs> all right, this is a great topic. Man, I get asked this all the time. Mark, what is the fastest way for me to get a six pack and I'm over the age of 40? All right, well stick around. There's lots of answers here and my personal trick, I'm gonna tell you at the very end. Okay, so lots and lots of ways that we need to think about this. And just starting right off is you can't focus on just a single method or a trick, okay? So guys, we're getting older. Uh, some of you guys are in your 40s. A lot of you guys watching are in your 50s and 60s, even 70s, all right? I'm 58 years old. So the deal is there's not a single answer, all right? And I don't want to cop out on this, okay? All right? And I'm just telling you the truth, all right? Anybody, any video that you watch where they say, I've got the answer for getting a six pack after 40, well, they're lying to you, okay? <laughs> there is no single answer. There's lots of things we have to do. And remember, you combine all these things and man, they really do start to add up. But a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit over here, and guess what? You know, the sum of the parts tends to be bigger, okay? as a whole than all the little individual pieces, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna start naming off some of these things. So it's tough enough already. Because we're getting older, we need to basically know and use every trick in the book. And the reason is, of course, our metabolism is slowing down. And really that correlates more towards our hormones than anything else. And our hormone, there's really nothing we can do about it either. All right, that's just the way God made us. So once we hit about 28 or 29, 30 maybe, our bodies just naturally start to produce less and less testosterone every year, okay? And there's all these different studies and, and they've, they've just studied the hell out of this, by the way, guys. So on average, we're gonna lose about one to 2% of our total testosterone production every year after the age of 30, all right? And so that adds up big time, all right? You know, when you're 35, no big deal. But when you're 58, man, that's a long time. It's been 28 years <laughs> since I was 30. So my testosterone level has been just kind of naturally slowly declining. So what can we do about it? Well, there's lots of little tricks and that's what we're here but talking about. All right, so we gotta figure out ways to get that testosterone up. And I think personally the best way is to start doing resistance training. And resistance training really is lots of different things. So some of you guys think, all right, we gotta get a gym membership. That's what I think. I love going to the gym, okay? I love hitting the weights. I love being around other people. I kind of feed off their energy. Um, and to be honest, Lee, I got a little ego thing going. I kind of like showing off a little bit, you know, for the girls and even, you know, some of these young guys, I like showing up the young guys at the gym. I think it's great, you know. Um, so that kind of motivates me, but you don't have to have a gym membership. You can do resistance training at home, all right? I've got an entire workout program designed specifically to do fantastic resistance training at home using dumbbells, your body weight, and resistance bands. All that counts as resistance training. So what the heck goes on? So as we work our muscles, and I'm not talking about just kind of going through the motions. I'm talking about really pushing yourself hard, getting those muscles sore, getting a big pump going, feeling, feeling that lactic acid, that burn in your muscles. All that sends signals to our brain to just ramp up our body's natural production of testosterone. Basically, it's trying to force our bodies back into our youth, back into our 20s, as much as possible. Now, we're never gonna get back to that position when we're in our, you know, 25 years old, okay? I'm never gonna be able to personally produce that amount of testosterone. I wish I could, and those were the good old days. You don't even realize when you're 25 how great you have it. But remember, these little tricks I'm telling you are gonna add up, all right? So that is a fantastic way to do it. Resistance training, I don't care whether you go to a gym and do it or whether you work out at home with bands and dumbbells and just your own body weight. You have to work those muscles. And not just for your testosterone, guys. I think it's actually more important for us older guys to lift weights than it is for younger guys, all right? Because 
by the time you get to be my age, I mean, you got a job, all right, where you're basically sitting on your ass all day, right? Um, it's, just, it's just what happens as we get older. We just get sedentary. We're not playing those sports, all right? And I don't even mean organized sports. I mean, I'm just, you know, when we were young, we just went out and threw the football with our buddies out in the front yard, right? We went and kicked the soccer ball. We went and, you know, hit, hit the baseball, played a little pickup basketball, all right? Those were things that we just naturally did, touch football, you know, on the weekends. So that just doesn't happen anymore, right? So when we start lifting weights, start doing resistance training, we are basically retraining our body to pretend like we were when we were in our 20s and we were just naturally playing lots of sports, okay? So it's also good for those proprioceptor cells. And, and that's another thing I've talked about in some other videos. You got these little cells, they're sensory cells, they're all over your body. They're not just in your muscles, they're in your tendons and ligaments and joints and your brain. And those proprioceptor tells, cells can send signals to your brain so your brain can tell where your body is, where your arms and your legs are in three dimensions. And it, it's you know really important for your balance, okay, and your coordination. And Guys, man, I'm just not using them. You're not using them like we used to when we were running around. Can you imagine trying to run and catch a football right now? So your brain has to figure out the football is going on a certain trajectory. I'm running at a certain speed, okay? And I either got to speed up or slow down or do this or do that to catch the football. All right, so it was easy to do 30 years ago. Same thing with the baseball, trying to run and catch a baseball. I mean, I, gosh, I could do it in my sleep. It was so easy. I could catch a football one-handed. Uh, and nowadays, like, I'm having to, like, really focus if I go out and throw a baseball with a buddy. I mean, I just, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. And it's just because we're not using those proprioceptor cells. And so lifting weights, even though we're not necessarily running, is forcing our body to use all those cells, all right? And it's forcing our brain to kind of relearn what's going on in three dimensions with our body, which of course also assists with our balance and coordination. So these are all benefits to resistance training. So we got the increased testosterone and, and, and guys, testosterone is important for two, two reasons. I don't think I touched on this. First of all, it's critical for building muscle. So the more testosterone we have in our body, the more muscle we will build. All right, so your, your body, you, you know, when we, when we lift weights, we actually damage those muscle fibers. I mean, that's the goal. We're, try, we're trying to actually create millions of these little tiny microscopic tears in these muscle fibers. And so what happens is your body uses testosterone and protein that we eat, and it uses that to repair those damaged muscle fibers every single night when we're sleeping so that when we wake up over the next couple of days, those muscle fibers are just a tiny bit bigger and just a tiny bit stronger than they were before. And when we do that day after day, week after week, month after month, guess what happens? Your muscles get bigger and guess what? Bigger muscles mean you're going to burn more calories. Okay, so I've been talking about different ways to help our body create more testosterone kind of naturally, all right? There's one other trick, all right, that you need to know about, and that's with supplements, all right? So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but there are supplements, and we do sell some of them, so I don't wanna hawk this too much. It's not, I don't want this to be a pushy sales piece today, but supplements do work, all right? There are certain ingredients in some of the high-end supplement lines that can also trick our body into producing more testosterone. So that's just kind of another way to help. I think resistance training is, is the best way. All right, I think supplements are second best. But you know, remember, we're talking about every trick in the book, right? You start combining all these different things and guess what? At the end of the day, we can do fantastic things for our hormone levels. All right, we're still talking about how to get six pack. Well, remember, getting a six pack means we don't have any body fat or at least not much. So the whole goal here, guys, is to get rid of the fat that's covering up the six pack that you already have. And I've been talking about building muscle, increasing our testosterone, and how that will affect the amount of fat on your body, all right? Second thing is, people think of testosterone as, as I just mentioned before, a, a really effective way of building muscle. So when you talk about these huge bodybuilders, they're, in, they're injecting steroids. Well, the, one of the steroids that they inject is testosterone, right? <laughs> they just inject way, way, way more than your body naturally produces. Another thing 
increased testosterone does for us. Besides build muscle, guys, very few people under, really understand this because they just don't do the research, but testosterone helps you burn body fat, your existing fat. And scientists, have, and I've read tons of different studies on this, and scientists don't know exactly what's going on. But they know men with higher levels of testosterone, their bodies are more efficient at using stored body fat as a source of energy, all right, as opposed to carbohydrates that we eat every day. So if we can get our testosterone higher, not only do we build more muscle, all right, but we also burn more body fat. And of course, that's the goal to getting that six pack, right? Another, another thing that's, a, that's an added benefit to, to building muscle, all right, because remember, we're trying to get rid of fat, is it increases your resting metabolic rate. So what is that? That is the amount of calories your body just naturally burns at rest. And remember, guys, we're at rest, what, 95% of the day? <laughs> so when you're sleeping, that's 100% of the time you're at rest. And you know, when I'm watching TV, when I'm sitting at my computer, Heck, when I'm eating a meal, I'm at rest. I mean, very, a very small percentage of the day, even for me, is spent exercising. So we wanna get our metabolic rate as high as possible, okay? And when you build muscle, that increases your resting metabolic rate. And that means we're gonna be burning more calories throughout the entire day, all right? And that's another thing that kind of happens as we get older, you know, we, we lose muscle mass, and because of that, our metabolic rate starts to drop. All right, guys, I'm gonna move on from building muscle, working out, testosterone, all that stuff, to an obvious thing that we haven't covered so far, and that is the dreaded cardio, <laughs> okay? So, most guys don't like cardio, me included. I know there's some of you guys out there that just love to run or bike or row or whatever it is, okay? But you guys are in the minority. I'm talking to the vast majority of guys out there that don't like cardio. Well, there's, there's two types. There's aerobic and anaerobic. So aerobic cardio is something that, eh, I just gives me the chills, I hate doing it. And that is steady state cardio. So when you go out and just jog two miles, three miles, whatever, and that's steady state cardio or aerobic, all right? I, that just, I'm, I get bored doing that, okay? Um, and I think there's a better way, anaerobic. So that's anaerobic, it means, you know, you're so out of breath, you're not getting enough oxygen to your muscles. It, it literally means without oxygen, okay? And so that in, implies some type of sprinting or really hardcore pushing yourself hard type of cardio. And I like doing that. And there's an added benefit to doing that, <laughs> several of them. First of all, it doesn't take as long. So doing steady state cardio, you gotta go out and run several miles to really burn a fair amount of calories. And that just takes a while, right? And some guys love it, but I hate it. So I like to do sprinting type of cardio, or we, of, we often call it HIT. H-I-I-T, which stands for High Intensity Interval Training. And when I say sprinting, I don't necessarily mean running 100-yard dashes, okay? I don't do that because I'll pull a hamstring. I'm sure you guys will too. But there's lots of different exercises you can do full out, as hard as you can, in a sprinting type mentality that you're not gonna hurt yourself. You're just gonna get extremely winded. You're gonna build up a ton of lactic acid and you're gonna have to stop and catch your breath after just about 20 or 30 seconds. And that's the type of cardio that I recommend you guys do. So let me explain how I do HIT, okay? So lots of different ways. You can do it at home in your den. All right, you can do, you know, you know, running in place for 20, 30 seconds and then stop and catch your breath for a minute and then do it over and over and over again, all right? You know, do that 15, 20 times, that is an incredible hit workout. Now, the, the benefit of these high intensity interval training is it increases something called EPOC, all right? That's another <laughs> acronym. It stands for Excess Post-Exercise oxygen consumption, okay? And the great thing about developing this epoch effect, it's also called or referred to as afterburn, it means that you raise your metabolic rate 
for hours and hours and hours at long after you've quit working out. I mean, that's the beauty of it. So you go out and jog two or three miles, as soon as you stop, within 15 minutes, your metabolic rate drops back down to its normal resting levels, okay? So you, you had the benefit of burning extra calories while you're running, but then when you stop running, you know, it stops. Doing high intensity training that I'm talking about, your metabolic rate stays higher for hours and hours and hours. Sometimes if you do it hard enough, it can stay high for an entire day, all right, for until the next day. And so that means you're gonna continue burning more calories than you normally would, all right? as if you had just done plain old, you know, steady state cardio. So that's, that's an added benefit. And the second added benefit is it doesn't take as long. All right, so I can do a really intense HIIT workout in, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, and I'm done. So that, that's really cool. So how do I do it? All right, I like doing it at the gym, all right? I can also do it outside on a nice sunny day. I can, I can run sprints up hills or up, say, stand, uh, uh, steps in a stadium or stairs. Uh, so I go as hard as I can for about 20-30 seconds and I stop and catch my breath for a minute and I do it over and over and over again. When I go to the gym, I got a really great way, guys. You're going to love this. So you know the elliptical machine, all right? Get your legs going, your arms going with the little things. So I will turn up the resistance level on that almost all the way, highest resistance possible, okay? And then I will go all out as hard as I can for about 20 seconds and I'm just gassed, all right? And then at the end of 20 seconds, I'll just kind of rest, all right? And I'm just going as slow as possible, I'm trying to catch my breath, and I'm looking at the timer on the machine, okay? And I'm waiting for the clock to get back up to the top of the next minute, all right? So it gets, you know, and so at the top of the next minute, I go again, 20 seconds, really, really hard, you know? If you don't, if you don't go 100%, that's fine. You can go 90%. You need to be going really hard so that you're totally out of breath after about 15 to 20 seconds. All right, then you coast. <sighs> catch your breath for the remainder of that minute. So that means another 40 seconds. You catch your breath. The clock gets to the top of the next minute. All out for 20 seconds. So that is a fantastic hit workout. And remember, I can do you know 10, 15, even 20 cycles of that. And I mean that is killer. So. Lots of different ways to get hit in, but the whole goal is to burn lots of calories and because it's hit, it gives that epoch effect I'm talking about. And so my metabolism will be so high that my body will continue burning more calories than it normally will for the rest of the day, even when I'm sitting in front of the TV or in front of my computer. All right, guys, another little trick to burning calories, which is the key to get rid of body fat, which is the key to that six pack ab. And that is just avoid being lazy. <laughs> all right, so that's just naturally how our world is now. All these inventions, everybody's creating things to make our lives easier, all right? Escalators, elevators, remote controls. Remember when you were young, you had to get up off the couch and come over and turn the TV channel. I was the TV channel changer in my household. You know, my dad said, Mark, get up, put it on channel three. Um, mowing the lawn, walking the dog, I mean, all these kind of things, golf, God, I see this all the time, guys renting golf carts. So these are all super easy things to do to get your butt off the couch or chair and just move, okay? So if you work in an office on the third floor, fourth floor, I don't care, walk. Now, if you're on the 50th floor, I don't expect you to do 50 floors, but guess what? Walk from the lobby to the fifth floor and then take the elevator to the to your you know to your office and then try to progress you know over the next few weeks and months to, you know walk the first 10 floors and then get on the elevator um, i used to travel a lot i was in air, airports all the time and i'm sitting in that damn airplane and then i see people get on the tram you know i got 2 hours to get to the next gate you know to catch that connecting flight well i wouldn't get on the tram i would walk a mile and a half with my bag okay through the airport all right, so that was my way of trying to get a little bit of exercise in there. Another thing is, guys, I love golf. I'm a big golfer. And let me tell you, I always walk. I don't care if it's 100 degrees, you know, or if it's really cold. My group, and my group is all older than me. I'm the youngest guy in my group. Everybody walks. So when you play golf and you walk 18 holes, that's eight miles. So you're carrying your bag. I don't care if you're even using a push cart, that's fine. You're walking eight miles. You're burning almost 1,500 calories. That's, that's about a half a pound of fat every time you walk golf, all right? So screw that golf cart, save yourself a bunch of money, burn a ton of calories, and get a ripped six pack 
for, for your effort. Okay, finally, I'm gonna kind of start to start to wrap this up. I still got plenty to say. The most important thing that you guys need to do to get a six pack, and this is not my personal trick, this is just for all you guys out there, and that is nutrition. So, uh, I don't know if you've heard this before or not, but I mean, I know tons of trainers, I've seen tons of studies, and I promise, all these professional trainers will tell you that nutrition is about 70% of what it takes to get in shape and get that six pack. So, I don't care how hard you hit the weights, I don't care how much cardio you do, if you're eating crummy, you'll never get a six pack. You cannot out train a bad diet, okay? And so that is universal. So guys, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to eat right now. I'm just gonna tell you that that's the first thing you need to focus on. And secondly, you need to realize that you have total control over that. And so you don't have any excuses. And I, and I will admit, nutrition's the hardest part of this whole thing. And let me tell you why. Most people don't even think, they don't even understand why. So when you go work out, all right, I don't care whether you go to the gym or at home, at most, most of you guys are gonna spend, what, an hour exercising? A lot of you guys can knock out your workout in 30, 40 minutes at home, right? And then you're done. You don't have to think about it anymore, all right? Got the workout done for the day. Don't have to worry about that until tomorrow. Well, nutrition is something you have to worry about every single waking moment of the day, and that is hard, all right? So you get hungry, people are bringing donuts to the office, you know, your wife, your girlfriend's bringing crappy food into the house, it's just always there. So the nutrition is something that is constantly, constantly, you know, uh, giving you problems all day, every day. So I get it. That's why it's so hard to get a six pack, right? But you don't have an excuse. Nobody is forcing you to eat this food, this crappy food, right? So you do have an, ex an occasional excuse for missing a workout, right? There's just, you just couldn't get to it. I mean, just physically, there was not enough time in the day, all right? Maybe you were sick or injured. Uh, maybe you had some family problems, some business problems. You just didn't have time. We'll make it, we'll make up that workout tomorrow. But you never have an excuse for eating bad food. I don't care if you're at a party, if you're traveling, uh -uh. there's always healthy things you can eat, all right? Nobody is cramming those donuts down your mouth, right? Or that cheeseburger and fries. You just have to learn how to say no. And once you develop that kind of self-discipline, I promise guys, it will get easier. Okay, finally, the last thing. Remember I told you if you stick around, I'm gonna tell you my personal trick to getting six-pack abs. And guess what it has to do with nutrition? I have the same problem you guys have when it comes to food, all right? I don't crave sweets so much. I crave things um, like cheese and crackers and crunchy, salty things, all right? Well, those things are, <laughs> not, you know, those things got a lot of calories in them. So my trick is I just don't bring it in the house, all right? Simple as that. If, I, if it comes in my house, eventually I'm gonna end up eating it, all right? No matter, I got a lot of self-discipline, but I see that in the refrigerator every, every day. I just can't bring myself to taking good food and throwing it in the trash. It just, I just, it ends up going in my mouth. And so, one of the reasons I have this picture up here is to give you a perfect example, okay? of why nutrition is so important and how my trick works so well. So this, this guy right here, Austin Sullivan, is one of my closest friends. I know he's, he's a captain in the Marines. He's 30 years younger than me, but we were super, super tight. And he was just down here this past weekend visiting. We don't live in the same city. And he was complaining to me at the age of 28, and this guy's a badass Marine. Uh, trust me, he's, he's not your average run-of-the-mill Marine. He's an officer. He kicks everybody's ass when it comes to all these fitness things that they have to do every year. Um, and he's just a tough mother. And he's complaining to me how he is not happy with his physique. I mean, the guy looks great. I mean, the guy's just a monster. But he's complaining about a little bit of chubby thing going on around his waist here. And I was talking to him about it, and guess what? He's got this smoking hot girlfriend that lives with him, and she just brings all this food in their apartment. 
So when he was looking at my pantry in my kitchen, he opened the doors. He just started laughing. He goes, Mark, there's nothing in here. And I said, well, dude, first of all, I'm single. And secondly, what is in here is all good. It's all healthy. I, you know, anytime I get hungry, I can come in and snack on some of this stuff. And I don't have to, to really worry that I'm putting crap in my body okay it's not going to come back to haunt me in in the form of body fat and he he got it i mean the guy's really sharp so my trick would work perfect for austin and if it works for a 28 year old i guarantee it's going to work for you guys so don't bring it in the house you just need to learn what's bad for you what's good for you and simple as that guys all right, we're going to get six packs overnight, right? Just just do what Mark just said here, and guess what? I wake up at the end of the week, and I'm just going to be ripped. No, <laughs> it takes a little while. It doesn't happen overnight, but it will happen over a period of weeks and months, and, and the more dedicated you are, simply the quicker it's going to happen. It's just as straightforward as that. So guys, you have to stick with it, and don't ever give up on yourself.